Welcome back to Morning Joe. Joining us now is former Republican governor and South Carolina congressman Mark Sanford. He has a new book coming out in August entitled Two Roads Diverged, a second chance for the Republican Party, the conservative movement, the nation and ourselves. Uh, and welcome back to the show. I'd love to hear about that second chance, but I think also the question might be how to get Republicans who are in office right now to take it. Well, that's the $94 question. That's why you got to read the book. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, the long and the short of it is uh, we are at a crossroads, uh, not just as a party, not just as a conservative movement, but, frankly, going forward as a nation, because we're all in this together. And the norms that have been broken that you were just talking about in the last segment are absolutely startling. And what needs to be remembered here is that the Roman Republic, after 500 years, just didn't fall. It was the erosion of norms and institutions and traditions that paved the way for the likes of a Caesar. And so what I'm suggesting is that we're playing with absolute fire. We have got to get off the road that we're on and try a different path. And ultimately, that's what this book is about. So, Mark, when we had John Banner on, a lot of people said, how dare he talk about uh, Donald Trump? He was responsible. Uh, for starting the fire. There are people that would say that you and I uh, in the 94 Congress were responsible for starting this fire, that Trump was nothing new, that the groundwork was laid for Donald Trump well before he got there. What do you say to critics who would say uh, that you and I, the class of 94, even Ronald Reagan was responsible for uh, where we are right now? I'd say give me a break. I mean, that is a complete joke. I, and, and I say it for this reason. Ronald Reagan, whether you liked him or not, was absolutely crystal clear about a governing philosophy. Sometimes he got there, sometimes he didn't, but he was clear about what he viewed as true north. Similarly, the class of 1994, with a contract with America, with things that we viewed as true north, were ultimately about conservative principles. You could agree or disagree with them, but there was a guiding governing philosophy. And what we have devolved down to now is, is frankly, a cult of personality that has been built around one man, not a governing philosophy, but about one man. And that is a far cry from what you saw before. So I would say, no, we weren't the precedent to what's, what's occurred of late. We were trying to govern toward conservative philosophy, which is what the Republican Party used to actually yeah. be about. So, and you talk about playing with fire, um, and, and the, the problem, though, that I think we're confronting right now is getting everyone to see the same thing, fire. Um, so let's use January 6th as an example. What do we make of uh, people that you've worked with, Joe worked with, who refused to see the fire the same way, January 6th, for what it was? Well, I, 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 A, I think you have to differentiate. I, I, I would say a lot of people that, quote, didn't see it. I mean, you know, half of the House voting afterward to not, you know, basically codify what the Electoral College had come up with. Um, uh, I, I think that's self-preservation. I mean, the name of the game is staying in the game for a lot of people in politics. And so there's a lot of I hear no evil, I see no evil, I speak no evil based on mm -hmm. I want to keep my job. That's what's really going on. And, and so I, I would say for that group, I think it's the obvious. Let me stay in office. For a lot of other folks who saw it differently at the grassroots level, there was genuine frustration with the way in which the Republican Party had ceased to deliver and stand for the ideals that they'd fought for for years in the trenches. And, and I absolutely understand that frustration. But what was taken was, frankly, incitement of the crowd. I mean, sedition is what you'd call it. I think that's what President Trump did in, in riling up that crowd and saying, let's go to the Capitol and let's put a stop to this. So I, I think you got to differentiate. You have genuine frustration, some of it warranted by people at the grassroots level, uh, obviously some of it taken way too far by some of the nut jobs that stormed the Capitol. But you've got a lot of self-preservation and, frankly, codifying and, 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 and Molly, I mean, just pushing ahead uh, by people in office because they want to keep their jobs. Casey Hunts with us and has a question. Casey. 
Congressman, good to see you again. Um, you are, of course, sure. not the first person to make this argument. I mean, we've been having these kinds of conversations for a long time now, um, and there have been a handful of you that have been willing to go out and, and say these things about your own party. But the thing is that one of the things that you all have in common is that most of you aren't actually elected Republicans anymore because the voters, frankly, are with Trump. And the acknowledgement has been that you really can't convince them otherwise. So I guess my question is, I, I mean, I hear you. I, I, I take the premise of your book, but what's to actually be done about it? We haven't seen anyone demonstrate that they can win an election. No Republican was able to beat Donald Trump in a huge uh, primary field. And look where that got us. Yeah, I mean, but but I mean, these are sort of the vicissitudes of, of democratic rule. You're going to have ups and downs. You'll have crazy moments. The founding fathers talked about that. We're in one of those crazy moments. And what was incumbent upon me as an elected official with 25 years worth of time span between Congress, governorship, back to Congress, is to point to what I believe to be true north. That it ultimately cost me my job in Congress as it did all the folks that stay, you know, spoke out earlier, to your point, Casey. I mean, you know, Flake and Corker in the Senate, and me and Amash in the House. But that tide is yeah. beginning to abate. I mean, if you look at the, 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 the fact that Trump isn't on Twitter the way he was, I mean, a lot of things are going to dissipate that voice. And the question now is, where do we go? And I think that that's with some degree of authority, based on the way I spoke up when I was in office and based on those 25 years, that those of us who've seen this movie play ought to speak out as directly and forcefully as we can. And ultimately, that's what this book is about. Former Republican governor and congressman Mark Sanford, thank you so much. Greatly appreciate it. His new book uh, titled Two Roads Diverged, uh, is, it's coming out. Uh, this fall. Gene Robinson, we we're going to give you a question. We're running out of time. Mm -hmm. The thing that I find mm -hmm. most fascinating, Gene, about Mark Sanford's story is he made a personal mistake. It would have finished most people's political mm -hmm. careers, but Mark fought his way back. Yeah. He got reelected to Congress despite that. And then he got voted out for only voting with Donald mm -hmm. Trump 92 percent of the time. Yeah. That tells you, talk enough. about the personality cult, that tells you where the Republican <laughs> Party is. It tells you, yeah, Mark Sanford is a genuine conservative, and so obviously there's no place for him in today's Republican Party. Full stop. That's just where it is. I hope people listen to him, listen to his message. I'm not optimistic that they will. But just from, from the whole morning, can I say one other thing? Keir sure. Simmons, that interview, that interview with Putin, Keir Simmons is, um, is, is hero of the week. Um, what an amazing uh, and insightful interview. Uh, he, he has given us a lot to, to chew on as we, as we wait for, the, for President Biden's meeting with, uh, with President Putin. Yeah. And he really laid out clearly what, what President Biden has in front of him uh, as he goes into that meeting. That does it for us this morning. Stephanie Rule picks up the coverage right now.